Hi, this is Dr. Richard Ruling here to share with you on the topic of the first seal in Revelation 6. We're going to decode it looking at some of the phrases. Uh, when uh, the Lamb opened the seal, it says uh, he heard uh, thunder, one of the four beasts, saying, Come and see. Actually, as you consider it, the third beast, I'm sorry, third verse says it's the second beast, fifth verse says third beast, and seventh verse says fourth beast. So rather than just one of those beasts, it's the first beast. And the first beast in, in Revelation 4, 7 is a lion. In Revelation 5, 5, it's the lion of Judah. So when John heard thunder, it's the roar of the lion. And Joel 3, 16 decodes this. It says the Lord will roar, the heavens and earth will shake. So this is about an earthquake, okay, that initiates the end times. Because as you look in Joel 2, 10 and 11, you find that an earthquake, uh, there's an earthquake and it says it's the day of the Lord. Paul says similar. Well, he says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 2 and 3, the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. When they're saying peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. Well, an earthquake can cause, cause sudden destruction, unexpected destruction really. So uh, this is uh, a focus on the end times when God's people can be sealed if we're ready for it. And if we are expecting, because we understand those Jewish feast days as times when important events can happen. So at any rate, here we go. Need to shut something off. The seals are really information that are emphasized seven times in the Bible in different locations. And if we understand that they can be the information we need for the Feast of Unleavened Bread as a wedding feast for Christ. God got an ignorant bride at Sinai that worshipped a calf 40 days later and it must not happen to Christ and it's the provision for this not to happen is embedded in the wedding parables because of the wedding feast. In Matthew 22 the, the king sends his servants like I'm coming to you as a, a servant bidding you to a feast, a feast of information, not a feast of crackers. Uh, the wedding parables all had Passover imagery, and the wedding feast, the feast at that time of Passover is unleavened bread, but it's really a spiritual application so that we are not just eating crackers. or That's not a very attractive idea of a wedding meal, but when you understand that God intended to send Elijah before the day of the Lord to prepare his people, and Elijah is supposed to restore all things, it says in Malachi 17, verse 11. We can, if we become the bride of Christ, be the Elijahs and help to restore God's name, among other things, because I think that's the clue for this first seal. Because when John heard thunder, thunder is also connected with God's name in Matthew, hold on, I think it's John, yes, it's John, <laughs> Twelfth uh, chapter, around the 28th and 9th verse, Christ asked the Father to glorify his name. And the people surrounding him thought that it thundered. Another uh, example of this link is in Revelation 14, 1 and 2, where the 144,000 have God's name in their forehead. And uh, in the next verse it says there were lightnings, voices, thunderings, uh, etc. So there, there you have it, again, a connection of thunder with God's name. So we're going to look at God's name. It is emphasized seven times in the Ten Commandments. If you look at Exodus 20, verses 3 and onward, you will find the word LORD in all caps seven times. And the, the reason for that is that translators removed God's name and supplanted it with a title, LORD. And that they should not have done. Christ said not one jot or tittle. The word jot is translated from yod. Christ was saying, don't, want, don't remove even one yod. Translators removed not only the yod, but the whole name. Four letters, four letters called a tetragrammaton uh, uh, that the Hebrew people, Jewish people, are familiar with. And they, th they think that name is Yahweh. Uh, but they don't say it. They, they're afraid of offending God or taking it in vain or something like that. But the information I'm going to share with you suggests that it's not Yahweh. That... Um, if you were to have a copy or go to a library and look up uh, Josephus, a historian at the time of Jerusalem's destruction, 
he saw them bringing the furniture out from the temple that had been destroyed and including the golden crown and he says in which was engraven that sacred name it consists of four vowels and that's a, a and it, by the way you can look it up if you go to the library and they have Josephus it's the wars of the Jews book 5 chapter 5 section 7 but there's additional information to support this uh, the Oxford University's uh, uh, textbook of classical Hebrew uh, published uh, more than 50 years ago now says that anciently those four letters Yoth, He, and Bob were uh, long vowels and it was later decided to denote them by uh, little dots or whatever but anciently they were letters that were denoting the vowels and a, a book of uh, called The Book of Words by Lawrence Kushner, a Jewish rabbi, published by Jewish Lights Publishing, also confirms that the, those four letters frequently mispronounced as Yahweh or Yahweh, but in fact they're all vowels, he says. So uh, the, if you st stop to think about it, it's a profound reason behind God's name because uh, consonants are made by obstructions to airflow, like B, D, B, D, M, K, F, G, whatever. Uh, if, if, we, if we only had the consonants, we couldn't talk. <laughs> it would be a very boring language. It wouldn't, it, but when you hear music and it's beautiful, someone singing, you're hearing the vowels. Vowels are the music or melody of what we like, and God supplied the vowels in his name. He gives, he's lending us his name in order so we can even talk, if you want to think about it that way. And so uh, what a great God we have to uh, enable us to be able to speak and to hear and to appreciate. So uh, we should not take his name in vain either. So that's it in a nutshell. And there's uh, uh, part of the information I got comes from a, a commentary by a Jewish uh, scholar. Uh, and you see the pictures of the alphabet here. Aleph is the letter A, Bet is B, uh, Gimel, Dalet. The He is one of those letters from the Tetragrammaton, and the, the Wa or Vav is the, is the next one. Then there's also the Yod, which we mentioned before. And uh, then it gives you the little meaning of those names. And it's in, in my book, uh, which I, I have, by the way, a, a uh, earthquake and seven seals. Uh, each seal is a chapter which denotes information that I think we will need in order to be sealed. You can get it uh, on the internet at Amazon.com or Kindle for just $2.99. It's not expensive for all the information there. People pay more than that for a meal. If you're in a foreign country and can't afford it, don't know how to get it, uh, send me an email and I'll send you the PDF. Uh, my email is ruling, R-U-H-L-I-N-G, the number seven, at Juno, J-U-N-O dot com. And God bless you. Thank you for your interest in God's name. It's who he is, and it's important. Um, many people think that they're God's special people. I come from a Seventh-day Adventist background, but I'm seeing that really uh, Adventists are, are close to a lot of information and truth, just like every other denomination is. Everybody is trying to status quo, preserve what's there, when in reality God has light for the end time, and we need to be open to it. We need to consider it and be willing to walk in it. The end times, I believe, are going to uh, send people in two directions. One, if they love God and have found him trustworthy and wonderful, supplying their needs, they'll run toward him in the end time. But most people, I'm afraid, are afraid of God, are wanting to do their own thing, not interested in repenting. If we're interested in repenting and willing to do it his way, we can be there. But if not, I think it's going to be trouble. And so take a look at the information. And let's uh, take another look. This video is a short one, and we'll do another one tomorrow on seal number two. Or you can go uh, on the internet to God's name, first with a number one, firstseal.wordpress.com, and you can read uh, more information that way if you want. So thank you for considering it. Look forward to talking to you again. Please like this and share it with your friends. This is the only way that I think God's going to get 144,000 who will, he will seal uh, this coming spring when big things happen.